name is Eric Peel. I want to tell you about a project I have been now finally completing. So uh, I've been a big fan of the TI-99 for a computer for a long time. And uh, there was a Red Door Challenge competition last year that I participated. And as part of that project I built a clone of this computer. And that clone finally ended up being this board over here. Which basically uh, is a fully functional clone of the computer based on the Texas Instruments uh, 99105 CPU dating back to 1982. So that basically um, is original silicon from TI. And the rest of the computer, that one, I basically built into an FPGA chip, uh, which is um, on this development board over here. So basically that chip includes all of the functionality of the original TI 99 4A. And uh, ever since I completed this project, I've been basically very much interested in taking this one step further, which is what if I could actually implement all of this functionality, which already was a great step, into something like this one, which is the, basically the same FPGA board, but this time um, doing so that the CPU also would be included here uh, within the FPGA chip. So I set myself this goal of being able to do as part of Red Shore Challenge 2017 in April, and I completely failed. I just ran out of time in that project. But um, uh, I didn't stop working on it, and uh, even although I had uh, some time constraints, and I finally uh, am at the stage where I've been able to complete that part, so I have the full TI-99 for a now implemented in this form factor and in this FPA chip. And not only that, but the CPU that I built here is running at 100 MHz, so it's running about 30 times faster than the original implementation. So perhaps a good way to test the performance and compare is to start with the original TI. So this one has the F18A expansion in it, which basically gives it the capability of doing VGA output. So let's just do a real simple uh, basic program that prints something on the screen so that we have an idea of what kind of performance the original machine can have. So let's make a small loop from 0 to a 1000 and uh, let's print the loop index. It's been a while that I used the keyboard. Do a little bit of key hunting here. Okay, so that's our program. Okay, not quite. Okay, and there we go. So it runs at its own leisurely pace here. Okay. Um, after looking at the timing, it took 2 minutes and 40 seconds to complete the loop um, and what that means is that it's going to be 160 seconds so not exactly very fast and if it was difficult for me to type on the original TI because I couldn't remember exactly how the key mapping word it's going to be a lot more difficult in this configuration with this FPGA based CPU and I, I'll show you why um, so let me uh, just go again to basic and now if I push a button, you can see that even a short push will actually very easily create a huge amount of characters. Um, and that must be because the original TI ROMs used for key repeat code, uh, some kind of a loop that's based on CPU speed, as opposed to, for example, video interrupts or something. So uh, it's going to be a challenge to be able to type anything, but uh, let me try to do it by very quickly tapping the keys. So luckily it's a mechanical keyboard, so it should be a theoretically possible to, to do it. Whoa. That's hard. Come on. Yeah, I can see that uh, I really need to uh, edit the wrong code um, so that the uh, typing becomes a possibility. Uh, 
And if you're wondering how this keyboard is connected uh, to the FPGA based uh, TI, uh, what happens is that this is just uh, the keyboard of the Windows PC and uh, uh, there's a mechanism through which uh, over this USB cable there's uh, a USB chip here that basically um, it just com uh, implements a serial port. Uh, so on the PC side I see COM5 and uh, on the FPGA there's a serial receiver and the receiver uh, has a bunch of functionality behind it. There's a, a hardware based uh, state machine there and uh, one of the functions it has is that it will take the keyboard inputs uh, from the keyboard routed by a um, Windows program and it puts into the appropriate memory locations so that uh, uh, the CPU here can see them as, as key presses on the TI. And the way it is actually implemented is that uh, that piece of functionality is implemented on the TI by the 9901 chip, so in the CRU space. Whoa. This is going to be time consuming. Okay, here we go. Maybe not. There we go. Okay, now. So we can see that that goes a whole lot faster. So running the test program actually uh, on the FPGA based system took 11 seconds so it was uh, about 15 times faster than the original TI and that means that I still have some optimization work to do because uh, this should actually run a lot faster than that. Um, okay so what we can also do here is to um, try out some other things like running TI games just to check on the compatibility side. With the audio cable plugged in we can see the game running rather fast. Let's see. So uh, the difficulty here is going to be that the, well, <laughs> I see the collider easily, but you can see that the fuel is just uh, disappearing before our eyes. And, and the other thing is that the, it's super easy to overheat the laser because uh, if you push. Well, I guess if you push it for a second, it already blows up. Okay, uh, next um, we can try the game Defender. Um, this actually is the game that I used uh, while I was debugging the FPGA. So I created a custom boot ROM for the TI, which uh, instead of going to the basic boot menu, it would launch Defender immediately. Uh, we are still actually here, you can see that Parsec is still showing up, even if the Defender ROM is loaded. And the reason for that is that um, Def um, Defender is a ROM-only game, whereas Parsec uses a GROM and ROM combination. So when the system is assembling the menu, it's uh, still from the GROM side, it's in Parsec, but it wouldn't work if I were to run it. So I'm just going to fire up Defender. And it came up, and uh, I have mapped uh, the keypad button zero uh, for fire, so uh, let's go. Okay, so we can see that this is hopeless, the game runs so quickly that there's no time to do anything 
at this uh, 15 times execution speed. Okay, and the next game to try out is uh, TI Invaders. This is one of my personal favorites from my childhood. So let's see if that works. Okay, looks good. Okay, so this time maybe it's possible to actually play. Okay, let me catch one of the enemy. So I just want to check out the timing because I remember that on the 99.105 version the end animation was running a bit too fast. Okay, so that was rather fast and the invader just went right there. Okay, finally let's um, try out Alpiner. Sadly there's no version of Alpiner in Finnish, so we settled for the English version. The sound works. This actually is the first time that I'm trying out these games other than uh, Defender and, and Parsec. Great to see the, um, the TI uh, finally in an FPGA version. So, uh, basically, uh, this version it would be easy to port to any other FPGA platform. And as a matter of fact, uh, one could also run uh, this uh, on the FPGA chip alone. So, this board here has uh, a couple of uh, static RAM chips, one megabyte uh, in total. Uh, and as a matter of fact, the design is such that right now, the ROM code uh, and also the GROM code and the external uh, and well the CPU RAM, it's all here uh, external in those chips. But this FPGA chip, uh, which is a rather small chip by today's standards, it has 64 kilobytes of static RAM built in. And at the moment, the design is only using 16K of that for the uh, frame buffer of the video processor. And there's a 2K block that's used um, as uh, a line buffer to do the scanline doubling for VGA output. So 18K is consumed, but uh, what that uh, means is that we still have uh, uh, enough memory, uh, so uh, more than 40K there uh, available on that chip. So that would be enough to uh, include the 8K standard TI ROMs and uh, the um, the 18K, uh, basically the TI uh, G runs, and I think that you would still have enough space there for a game cartridge. So that would actually truly be a single chip TI 